Hey folks, it's Jang here from UltimateRC.com with a summary of what I did to tune up my Traxxas Emax to run better on a track. And this started out its life as a ready to run brushed edition, completely stock, and it was uh, not very exciting to drive. It wasn't very fast and it uh, really didn't have good handling because the suspension was really, really soft. Now it's handling much better and it's much faster. So I'm just going to show you the minimum number of things that I did to get to this point. So here is the truck itself. I really wanted to minimize the money spent and the time spent in the workshop to get this thing up to a higher level of performance. Better wheels and tires are always a very good investment. And I went with truggy size and style wheels and tires because they have a nice low profile and tend to come with good compounds and good tread patterns. You'll want to pick a tread pattern that works best for the surface that you're running on and pick a compound depending upon how long you want it to last. So you're always gonna have a trade-off between durability of the tread or, or tread life and immediate traction. These here are from AKA and the tires are grid irons. I've used them on a number of different vehicles over time so you can see they're, they're worn down but they're still working much better than the original tires. I don't believe that AKA sells this wheel anymore. This is a one half inch offset wheel. You can still get these mounted from Duratrax. You can also get them unmounted. You can mix and match wheels and tires. You want to get half inch offset wheels in order to keep from narrowing up the track or the width of the vehicle overall. Standard offset truggy wheels will narrow the track uh, quite a bit. This limits that. It's still going to be a little bit narrower than some pure, pure basher style monster truck wheels and tires, but it's not going to be too bad. You're still going to have pretty decent stability here and you'll definitely be able to get some much better tread patterns. Again, You'll have to choose your own tread for whatever is best for the surface you're going to run on. In box stock form, the suspension on the Emax is lazy, plush, soft, anything that you can say, any kind of word that you can say to mean that basically anytime you land off a jump, it just goes straight to bottoming out. Anytime you go into a turn, it just rolls way, way, way over main problem there is the shock setup. However, the stock shocks themselves are just fine. Uh, it's, it's a very common misconception in the RC world that if your vehicle doesn't handle well because the, sh the shock setup is wrong, it means you need to get new shocks. You don't need to get new shocks all the time. You just need to improve the setup. Here, I've moved the lower mounting point down on the arms outboard. Uh, at one point I tried it all the way out, but I ended up with the second to out outermost hole. That reduces the droop or how far down the wheels can, can uh, extend when the vehicle is in the air and also when it's rolling in turns. And it also stiffens everything up. The farther out you go on the arm, the stiffer the overall uh, spring rate and damping action will be because you're changing the length of the lever arm. You're changing the mechanical advantage of your wheel versus your shock. You can see I'm still using the stock shock bodies. However, I did change out the springs. I went with some stiffer springs. These are low C, one tenth scale, triple X series uh, blue springs. I believe it, the length is two and a half inch uh, is, is the length and their direct fits right on here and they're stiffer than stock. So that helps a lot. And then I also changed the shock oil inside of there to 50 weight oil. I believe the stock is about roughly 30 weight. 50 weight is a good deal stiffer and it matches this spring rate much better. I adjusted my preload front and rear to set the vehicle where I wanted it. And I wanted the bottom, basically the lower arms to be pretty parallel going across. I gave a little bit more preload at the rear just because when the vehicle squats under acceleration, I wanted it to be a little bit more level. But that's, again, something that you need to do kind of subjectively. But just know that the lower you get it, the less chassis roll you will have because your whole center of gravity will be lower. However, you will also be closer to the ground. So if you're on a bumpy surface, you'll be hitting the ground more frequently. So again, it's another trade-off. These shock caps are also not stock. These are from Team STRC 
and they are direct replacements. They are aluminum and they fit right onto the original plastic shock bodies. These are very cheap and it's an easy way to improve one of the major durability issues with these shocks, which is the stock plastic caps can pop off just because they flex around the top. And that can be an, an annoying and embarrassing thing if you get into a crash and a shock pops off. It doesn't break, it just pops. This stops that problem. Improved handling is always a good thing, but you're going to want more speed also in order to be able to use and really push that increased handling. And with the brushed motor system that was stock here, it just wasn't going to cut it. I've upgraded to a brushless motor system here, a very cheap one. As of the time that I bought these, you could get a combo like this for about $150. Yes, $150 for the pair. And this is more than enough power to run this whole monster truck. This is a Hobby Wing Easy Run Series 80 amp ESC. And this is a G-Force uh, 40 by 68 millimeter 1 8 scale, kind of shortish 1 8 scale sized uh, motor. I got this one from Value Hobby. This actually came out of an RTR. ValueHobby.com uh, had, some, had some really cheap uh, combos and to this day there are many vendors out there that have various combos. Pretty much anything that is this size of motor and an ESC that is sized to run 4S through a 1 8 scale four wheel drive vehicle will get this Emacs running really, really well. And you're going to be looking at spending between $130 and $180 for one of these sorts of combos. You don't have to go with the maximum uh, power. You don't have to go with the maximum expense to get a lot of fun out of a monster truck like this. Originally, this vehicle had two brushed motors, and, and Traxxas does make a motor mount that is specific to one single uh, motor being mounted here. They also have a gear cover that matches it. You can go much cheaper by just avoiding that altogether. Just put a couple pieces of electrical tape over the hole that was left behind by the motor that you've removed. You end up with a few grams of dead weight there, but you're not going to notice it. So handling and speed, those go together really well, but they're not going to go together really well at all if your vehicle can't stay together in one piece. And in stock form, my Emacs was breaking apart terribly, absolutely just destroying itself over just basic normal driving incidents and accidents. So to improve the durability, which was really, really key for this vehicle and always has been throughout its history, I went with RPM bulkheads. These are nylon, they're plastic, but it's a much stronger, slightly more flexible uh, type of plastic with a completely different design. Not completely different, but a very different design. They have a lot more beef. They've put a lot more thought into maximizing the strength of the parts and they are direct bolt-in replacements and they will give you much better durability. I also got a RPM shock tower, which I only have replaced on the rear. You can get a front one also. I replaced the rear because my stock rear shock tower did break in two uh, on me and uh, it's just it's almost the same price to get an rpm replacement it also changes out these uh, these body mounts everything becomes a little more shock tolerant and crash worthy uh, when you sw swap out to rpm items i'm still using the stock arms the stock arms seem to be doing okay thus far but one last thing that i did to help tie everything together was i switched to aluminum skid plates now these are really useful for durability on this vehicle because of the way that it's designed. The skid plates will really hold together your, your rear bulkheads as well as your front bulkheads uh, by pinching them together, keeping them from moving, keeping them from flexing, and they also hold it in to the lower chassis braces. And then just in general, having aluminum parts down there rather than the stock ones that will snap right at the ends here. These will keep everything together. The ends right here at the, the front and the rear will bend in. If you take hard hits directly on there, you can always bend those back or you can just leave them up. Or eventually if it becomes too annoying when they do bend in, you can just cut them off a little bit. I'll leave just a little bit of a stub there, fold it up and just trim it down. Doesn't matter either way, really doesn't uh, have any effect on the handling or the durability of the vehicle in general. It's this that you want to have in metal. 
Everything else on this vehicle is still stock. The drivetrain is all stock, the chassis is stock, the radio is stock, the servos are stock, but those changes that I made made a huge difference on the track and it really behaves like a completely different animal now. The upgrades and tuning changes that you will want to make to make your Emacs behave more the way you want it to will depend upon exactly what you want to do with it and where you're going to be driving it and how you drive it. But I hope that the tips and the specific things that I showed in this video will be useful to you, educational, or at least entertaining. So that does it for this tune-up video. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to have a chance to talk to you again soon in the next one.